you probably think of the heyday of the steel mills. Smog-filled air, a fine coat of black dust on everything in sight. Workers leaving the mill covered in soot. Quite a few of these workers were accidentally killed during the industrial processes, therefore giving a lot of opportunities to make or find ghost stories. These are the real steel phantoms, not the Kennywood ride. Jim Grabowski, a fellow worker in 1922, unfortunately tripped over a rigger toad and met his demise in the ladle of molten steel. He is said to haunt Jones and Lathland's Steel Corporation's two shop, and you can hear cries of pain and help, followed by frenzied laughter. One of Jim's co-workers wrote a poem about these supernatural occurrences. When you're rocking up your do shop, you'll know someone is around. If you hear a sort of clanking and a hollow moaning sound. But the ghost of Jim Grabowski, who was killed in 22, must walk forever through to his shop, which I will explain to you. Jim fell into a ladle, and they couldn't find a trace, so they couldn't take the body to a vital resting place. Yes, there is a ghost in to his shop. I've seen his specter twice, and you'll stay away from there at night. You heed my advice. Near the mill, Old Hamburg Road is haunted by a spirit dubbed the Hamburg Ghost by the workers back in the day. Legend has it that, that the wife of the Hamburg Ghost was murdered on that road, and he was so distraught that he committed suicide by jumping in front of a train. His head was severed and rolled to Old Hamburg Road, where his wife met her unfortunate and untimely death. In the early 1950s, a University of Pittsburgh student was working at the mill when he encountered a ghost. His job at the mill was to gather up the hot slag, leftovers from the furnaces, and drive his train to the dump to dispose the slag. One day, he was driving the train to the dump when he saw an old woman dressed in coarse clothes that was covered in black soot and wore a red bandana. The young student told her that she was going to get killed, but she only replied, I can't get killed. I'm already dead. The student immediately told, told the boss about the strange woman he saw. His boss said that was Slag Pile Annie. During the war, Annie worked the same job as the Pitt student. She had been killed in an accident five years before. Come on down to the old western haunted house. We got oil wells weapons, and ghosts that will tickle your fancy. The goal, good old address to send a letter to is 666 Western Road. Hello, ladies and gentlemen. I'm Robert Sersnick, and today we have a very special guest, Maya Gelman, and she's going to uh, do a special tribute for all the steel workers who worked at the mill back in, here in Pittsburgh uh, back during the war. Um, so, uh, Maya, what are you going to be doing for us today? Well, basically, I'm playing this one song. Um, it's called Sweet Molly Malone, in other words, Song of Ireland. And basically, it's about, um, uh, obviously, her name was Molly Malone, and she used to walk up and down the streets with a cart full of, uh, like, like cockles and mussels, just like okay. mussels, yeah. Mm -hmm. And she used to sing cockles and mussels, and um, so, and then she died of a very bad fever. Mm -hmm. um, so they wanted to represent her and write a song about her. So. Hmm. And uh, what instrument will you be playing for us? I'm going to be playing the violin. Oh, okay. Uh, how long have you been playing the piano? Or violin, my bad. <laughs> um, I've been playing for about two and a half years. Okay, uh, speaking of piano, I play the piano, and that was my instrument of choice. Uh, what made you decide the, uh, violin? Well, for my eighth birthday, um, my grandma gave me money for piano lessons, and... But my dad said if I wanted to, I could use it on any, any instrument I wanted. So I decided that maybe instead of piano, I could do violin. Mm -hmm. oh. 
And uh, do you play any other instruments? No. If you could pick an instrument, any other instrument, what would it be? Probably piano. <laughs> yeah. Well-rounded one, huh? Um, do we have any other questions from the audience? And now we're going to have our performance by Maya Gelman. to SPBS, the scary Pittsburgh Broadcasting Station. Welcome back to Kaylee's Corner, broadcasted from SPBS. I'm Kaylee Weiser, reporting live from the Pittsburgh Playhouse with Isai, who is the director of the Pittsburgh Playhouse Tour. The Playhouse Tour is a one-time only opportunity because the Playhouse will be closing soon. Many people and the ghosts who have spent time there are sad because the Playhouse was a great place. Did I say ghosts? I definitely did. There are ghosts living inside the Playhouse. You'll get to see lots of ghosts on this tour. And you'll get to see all of the Playhouse's three theaters, the Rockwell Theater, the Studio Theater, and the Raw Theater. Now, I will ask Isai some questions, and the audience is allowed to ask questions as well. So, Isai, I've heard that you know so much about the Pittsburgh Playhouse theaters and how the ghosts there relate to the history of the theaters. How did you first hear about the Playhouse? Well, back in May of last year, 2017, um, I wanted to do a show there, so I auditioned for Sound of Music for Kurt. And so they canceled the show because they said they didn't have enough men to be in the show. And if I got to the theater and I actually got to do the show with all the other people, but I may have seen the ghosts. So that's kind of how I got to hear about the playhouse. I've heard there are six ghosts in the playhouse. Can you tell us about uh, three of them? Who are they and what, what are their history? So the three ghosts are the Lady in White, John Johns, and the Red Nini. So the Lady in White her, just had her wedding day in one of the theaters that they used as a church. So after their service, um, the bride and groom went to the reception, but the groom did not. A groom went to the upstairs brothel and cheated on, her, on his wife. And so the lady in white died, found him in the brothel with the other lady and shot both of them. And then she went upstairs to the roof and um, committed suicide by leaping off the roof. And then there's John Johns who is a perfectly nice guy. He likes to tip his bowler hat to everyone, and he's just nice and chill. So one day when he was um, eating in a banquet down in the restaurant in the basement, he suffered from a heart attack. So the people dragged him to his dressing room where he was doing a, a performance in one of the theaters, and he died right before the ambulance could get there. So you can hear his footsteps, and sometimes you may actually see him tipping his bowler hat or walking around. And some people have actually seen him dancing with the uh, lady in white. And the next ghost will be the Red Meanie. 
the red meanie has a like a weird name. So we don't really know like the backstory of who the red meanie was. We just know that one Halloween night in 1974, a group of teenagers went in the playhouse to conjure up spirits. And so they got a little bit more than what they bargained for. But when they got scared and were walking out, they saw um, the red meanie just running down the stage. And every time he crossed each part of the stage, he got like steam running from his head. And then he got so much steam that his he started to bounce off the theater walls. And the people, the ghosts of the theater who are now dead, were started to clap. And we think, we know that that's a show because a ton of people, and he's on stage, and they're clapping. And so those are kind of the, my favorite ghosts that I wanted to talk about. <laughs> You're listening to SPBS, the scary Pittsburgh Broadcasting Station. How do you feel about the Playhouse closing? I kind of feel sad because I probably won't get to do any shows in Oakland, but I'll get to do some downtown if, at the Pittsburgh Playhouse if I audition. And I kind of feel like sad for the ghosts because they, they won't have a, a place to stay. And it's also really good because they're getting a new addition in the downtown area. So why did you want to do the tour of the Pittsburgh Playhouse? I wanted people to see that ghosts may be real and that I wanted people to see that the people to see the Playhouse one more time before it closes. Yeah. I'll miss the Playhouse. Are there any other studio audience questions? No more questions? What? What's your question? Oh. I was wondering if you personally have ever seen any of the ghosts in the Playhouse? Oh. I have not seen any of the ghosts, but it would be very interesting to see one. The ghosts I would love to, I would like most likely want to see is John Johns because he's kind of nice. He's not terrorizing like the other ones, and he's just chill and he just walks around. Yes, the lady in the shirt that says awesomeness. Um, what would you do if you saw a ghost? Um, so, if I see a ghost, if it was a nice ghost, I would be like, and then, like, I would be, like, scared and, and, like, I didn't, I don't, didn't know what to do, but if it was a mean ghost, like the lady in white who was pointing a gun at me, I would probably shriek and run out of the building and run away. Yes, the lady with the butterfly shirt that says peace. Um, so, do you know anyone that has seen the ghost? Well, I know, um, someone named Jamie who has many um other friends or heard of people who have seen the ghost one has and they've both both i think been sewing one one of the persons person people people yes <laughs> um was sewing backstage and they saw the lady in white and so they screamed and ran all the way to their dorm room the other one just finished, like, went to finish their, um, their costume as fast as, fast, fast as they could, and then went. And, all right, that's all the time we have. If there are any more questions, you can come talk to Yasai after. Thank you for joining us, and we hope you go to the Playhouse Tour. The number to call is 412-066-6577. We also hope you will tune in again next time on Kaylee's Corner, broadcasted by SPBS.
places are supposedly haunted or possessed of some sort. First one is the Old Quaker Church in Fayette County, Pennsylvania. It was built in the 1800s by John Cope. The structure became vacant and held the title haunted. At night, the structure looks as if it had housed ghosts. In Thomas White's book, Ghost of West Southwestern Pennsylvania, he states, A lone building silhouetted against the sky, surrounded by graves and an ominous-looking me metal fence. Sounds pretty spooky already. There are many theories that lead, pe lead people to believe the church to be haunted. One r version is that there is a young woman buried outside of the establishment. Rumor has it that if you read the message on her grave, you will die the same way as the woman did. If you stepped on the stone that the message is written on, you would still die. Some people decided to test their luck and read the stone. A young man did this and was involved in a serious car accident. A man also did this and came home and found his house on fire. Some students had heard the rumor as well. One student read the description on the grave aloud. There was a chain of bad luck. He saw fire trucks in the street. His car had caught fire. His apartment burnt in the middle of the night. And his beloved dog had passed. A man was also walking his dog in the church graveyard. Soon he started to hear whispers speaking. The man kept telling himself that it was just teenagers pranking him. But later on, his wife was cleaning. She found her husband slumped in an armchair. He was pronounced dead. A witch was also supposedly killed at the same site as all of these deaths. She haunts the area and makes it very cold. Someone else, with else found, had found a full-grown deer impaled on a metal fence. Another disturbing fact is that a ghostly black dog chased a man. But in British folklore, is it, a it is a tradition that black ghostly dogs chase people. And be careful if you decide to go here. Don't! You will see an old woman blocking the exit. A driver in the 1990s was driving past the church. He saw the elderly lady in front of his car. He swerved to avoid her, but he knew it was too late. He ran out of his car and looked around. The woman had disappeared. The old woman won't let you go away if you come. Your car would shudder. But if you shut it off and turn it back on, the car will stall and the battery will be dead. Look in your rear view mirror for a fright. Yikes! There's the old woman. <laughs> to the new classes on how to make a cake on SPBS. We teach you how to make cakes, cupcakes, and spooky surprises all on SPBS. <laughs> Hello everyone, and welcome to Mythical Creature Expedition. Today, we are showing you some of the most mysterious creatures that roam the earth. Residents state that they have witnessed these creatures. Only some of them are real. We are finding out if the eyewitnesses were correct, or was it just their eyes playing tricks on them? These are some mythical creatures which turn out to be real. The first creature that we'll talk about is Bigfoot, which is probably the most well known. Bigfoot is said to live in Oregon and other Pacific Northwest states. Some people say they have located him. One woman claimed to have seen Bigfoot running through her backyard. Do you think it's true? Yes. No. Well, let's see. Rangers in the area have not identified this beast. However, we dive deeper into this. We went to see many people who have claimed to have seen Bigfoot, also called Sasquatch. 
The answer was... Yes! A DNA test was proof this hairy creature exists. Bigfoot is not a myth. He's real. Now we're off to Scotland, where the Loch Ness Monster lives. It lives in the biggest lake or loch there. The Loch Ness Monster is also known as Nessie. First famous sighting of the Loch Ness Monster was on May 2nd, 1933. There are famous pictures of Nessie. It looks like a dragon without wings, with a skinny neck and a, and a horse-like head. Scientists believe Nessie is a descendant of dinosaurs. Since dinosaurs were real, this is proof the Loch Ness Monster is real. Whoa! Next up is the Yeti. It lives in the Himalayas and is believed to be a cousin of Bigfoot. Like Bigfoot, it is a large hairy beast, but with hair white as the snowy mountains it lives in. There is no evidence these exist, but people can claim to have seen a man-like figure trudging through the snow. They believed it was the Yeti. Our last creature is a living legend. You probably think the Komodo dragon was always real, but you are wrong. Long ago, the Komodo dragons were considered to be mythical lizards. They originated in Indonesia. This myth proved them real, and they even have a secret weapon. Poisonous saliva that kills the dragon's prey by infecting the bite wound. After a few days, the prey would weaken, and the dragon gets to eat. Mmm, good. Wow, it turns out there are actually a lot of creatures that are proven to be real. Not only these, there are a lot others. So if you want to learn more about mysterious creatures like the wampus cat, Chessy, the chupacabra, or the orzak howler, and a lot more, tune in next week. Thanks for listening to Mythical Creature Expedition. I hope you learned a lot about mythical creatures. And remember, Bigfoot believes you. You've been listening to SPBS, the scary Pittsburgh broadcasting system, brought to you by Winchester Thurston and East End Performing Arts. We'd like to thank all of today's artists. Caroline Harmon. Miles Cantor. Kaylee Weiser. Isayala Quovarella. Tiffany Harmon. Robert Starcinic. Maya Gallen. And again, you've been listening to SPBS, the scary Pittsburgh broadcasting system.